Hi guys and welcome to this week's Unraid tutorial. This is the third and the final part of a three part series on fine tuning your Unraid server. If you haven't seen the first two parts then I highly suggest watching them first. Ok so just quickly before moving on to some VM techniques, let's just have a look at how we can see the resource usage in our docker containers. And for this we're going to install something called C Advisor. So in community applications do a search for C Advisor and install both C Advisor and CA Resource Monitor. For C Advisor you just leave the template with all default settings and install. So now you'll find when you go to your Docker tab, if you scroll down, you'll find CA Advisor is now at the bottom. Um, you can click on Docker Containers, and if I scroll down and have a look at SAB here, you can see things such as CPU isolation, like here the allowed cores of the 0 and the 14. Um, the memory is unlimited, and we can see various sort of usage overviews here. And obviously you can get to it too, just the normal way, by going to the IP address and the port number. Um, I prefer using a tab at the top. Um, if you don't know how to do this, then please see my other video on how to add a custom tab to Unraid. Okay, so now let's move on and discuss some techniques to fine tune the VMs. We're going to go back to the 4 core i7-6700 server and take a look there. And let's have a basic look at how a VM operates. Well, we have seen how to pin our virtual CPUs to our logical cores. But is that all what the VM uses, just those pin cores? Well no, there are overheads too. The hardware is emulated, and that is emulated by our CPU. But we can actually pin which cores these functions are running on in just the same way. If we don't do this, then these processes are spread across all of the cores of the server. So if we're having latency problems, then we can lock this process down and pin it to its own core. And we'll pin this to a core that we haven't pinned to the VM. This will keep the cores that the VM's operating system uses clean. So in this example, we'll have the Windows VM pinned to three hyperthreaded cores, then pin the emulator function to the first core, the one on RAID prefers. So how do we do this? Well let's take note of the first core, the vCPU1 and 4. Now as yet we can't make these changes in the Unraid template manager, so we have to edit the XML. So we need to look for the CPU tune section here, and just above the last closing tag we need to paste in this following line, emulator pin space CPU set equals and then in single quotations the numbers of the cores that we want to pin and so in this case it's 0, 4. Then click on to update just like any custom edit if we have to go back into the template manager and make another change then our custom edit goes away so we'd have to go back in and put it back in again. So pinning the emulator functions away from the CPUs that are pinned to the VM can in some cases decrease the latency. Now these functions don't use a lot of resources, so will not put much stress on a core. But in my opinion, it's always best to pin these functions to all of the remaining virtual CPUs, rather than just choosing one. That way, Unraid can manage the load over the existing cores. Now normally doing this will improve latency. But remember, if you pin this function to another core which is really being pegged out by something, then it could have a negative effect. So you just have to test and try out these things to find out which works best for you. Now another advanced tip that we can use is isolating CPUs from the host. Normally Unraid is free to access all of the cores on the server, so it can manage the load of what's running there as it thinks fit. But we can choose to isolate logical CPUs from the host, so here we could isolate two hyperthreaded cores. So Unraid now can't touch these cores, unless we pin things manually back onto them. So Unraid now has to manage all of what's running in the cores that it's allowed to. So these isolated cores are now clean, because nothing will be running on them. So now we can pin a VM to these cores, 
and we know it's definitely the only thing going to be using them. So how do we do this then? Well let's look at the CPUs that we want to isolate and here it is 2, 6, 3 and 7. So we have to make a change in our syslinux configuration file and we're going to see a line looking like this there. And then between the append and the init rd we need to add the following line. isol cpus equals 2, 6, 3 and 7. Another way we could write these numbers is in ranges. We could have 2 hyphen 3 comma 6 hyphen 7. Okay, so let's do this for real on Unraid. So on the main page, just click on to flash and scroll down and you'll see the syslinux configuration. And we've got like a few things saying label here. The one we need to look at is the one where it says menu default because this is the default one that the syslinux will load. And there's the line I was talking about, the append init rd. So in between there, we just need to put that line isol cpus equals 2 comma 6 comma 3 comma 7 and then just click on to apply now don't worry if you come here and you see there's already something in between the append and the init rd um, all we have to do in that case is just put it after that before the init rd so here it would just go like this so the isol cpus equals 2 comma 6 comma 3 comma 7 just goes afterwards we can have as many things in here as we like Okay, so once we've added that in, we need to reboot the server for it to take effect. Right, and just before we leave here, I'm just going to give you one other little tip. Um, you can see here the labels, underneath the top one it says menu default. So this is the default configuration that Unraid will load. The other ones underneath here, like the GUI mode, these are the ones that you have to select yourself before the timeout. Now we can add an extra one to it. So what we want to do is we just copy the top one here and we're going to paste it underneath making an extra label. But obviously we're going to have to take out where it says menu default because we can't have two default menus. And obviously we're going to call it something else. So this one I'm going to call Unraid OS Isolated CPUs. And now we're going to put in here in between the append and the init rd the line of code to isolate the CPUs. And so now if I click on apply and done, now when I reboot I'll get the option to start the server with isolated CPUs or to start it normally. Now one thing people have problems with is not knowing whether the CPUs have actually been isolated. Now did we put the code in the syslinux properly or did we make a typo? Well there's an easy way to check. We just need to open a terminal window and make an SSH connection to the server. OK, so once we have an SSH connection, so all we have to do is put in this command cat space forward slash sys forward slash devices forward slash system forward slash cpu forward slash isolated. And there you can see my isolated cores, the range 2 to 3 comma 6 to 7. So obviously if you didn't see anything here, then you've done something wrong and you need to go back and check. OK, so that's how we isolate CPUs. So you might not know that we can also assign back Docker containers to these isolated CPUs as well. It's not just VMs that we can do this with. So on a high core server, you could, for example, isolate eight CPUs, giving four of them to a gaming VM and four of them to Plex, and then leave the rest for the host. OK, so that's some ways to get a bit more out of your VMs by tweaking the CPU usage but we can also do things to improve disk performance too. So now we're going to go back to the Tips and Tweaks plugin from the first part of the video. OK, so here we can change the disk cache settings. We have disk cache settings to improve performance to vDisks by caching writes then flushing them to the real hard drive at certain intervals. However, this can cause issues sometimes with gaming VMs and VM streaming media. Now make sure you read this guide here before you go adjusting any of these settings. But the recommended settings for the mentioned type of VMs is changing this value here to 2 and this value here to 3. So if you don't want to change the cache settings this way, you can actually disable caching in the XML for each VM as well. I personally like to avoid using the cache altogether myself on gaming VMs. 
and you can do that actually in the XML of the VM itself. So just click on to edit XML and scroll down to you see your V disk and here's mine here and this line here we need to you change the cache from right back to none. I think for servers that store their VDisk on an SSD and we're going to be using VMs that have high I.O. then it makes sense to avoid the cache completely. Right guys and so for the final part of this video I'm going to be calling this strange tweaks and I'm going to be calling it this because probably no one will really ever use it and people will think why would you want to do that but anyway I think it's interesting so I thought I'd share it with you. Okay, so the first one. Well, we all know we can disable hyperthreading from the motherboard, but you know you can also do it from command line as well. I've made a script which will turn hyperthreading on and off from Squid's user script plugin, and the script is in the description. So let's go to user scripts and scroll down and add a new script, and we'll call this disable hyperthreading. And the second one we'll call it enable hyperthreading. Okay, so now we'll go up to the top, start on the disable one first, and we'll edit the script, scroll down to the bottom, and we'll just paste in, and we'll just paste in the script, and click save changes. Okay, and now we'll work on the script to re-enable it, and save the changes, and we'll run the disable hyper-threading script, and click done. And now you can see all of my cores don't have any hyper-threads. Okay, so to turn it back on, just run this script, and now we've got our hyperthreads back. And we can actually turn on and off hyperthreading on individual cores as well. So all we need to do is make an SSH connection to the server, and then run this command. And here where it says CPU dollar and X, we just need to change that for the number of the CPU we want to disable. So for this one here, for my sixth core, which is six forward slash 20, on the core, pick the higher numbered hyper thread, then it will keep the cores listed in the same order in the GUI here. So I'm gonna pick CPU 20, and just press enter, and we saw something happened here. So then if we just refresh this page, then you can see now in the cores, we've got one core that has no hyper threads. And to turn it back on, just run the same command, but this time we want to echo a one. And now just refresh the page, and now our hyper threads turn back on. And now to see how this works, what we need to do, we'll just change directory to this directory here, the SYS devices system CPU. And let's have a look at what's in this directory. And here you can see there's all my CPUs, the same numbers as what's down here. So let's change into CPU20's directory and have a look. And here you can see it's a file called online. So if we look inside that, it brings back a one. And so basically this file here, whether it's a one or a zero, is whether this CPU is online or not. Okay, so that's how we can disable hyper-threading on cores from the host rather than the motherboard. There really isn't any point in doing this. Well, unless you've got some really weird, obscure type of workload that runs better on non hyper threaded cores. Okay, so for the last thing we're going to look at, it's a little bit more useful. Um, it isn't recommended for gaming VMs, but this can be useful when running other VMs. Let's see how we can have a VM that isn't pinned to any cores and let the server manage this the same way it would like a Docker container. So if we look at the template here, we can see I've got eight virtual CPUs pinned. And there's no way that I can turn all of these actually off. I always have to have them pinned. But if we go back to the XML, we can actually remove the CPU tune part here. And now our CPU pinning is down to how many we have here. So I have it down as eight. But also we need to scroll down here and look at the topology and the topology has to match the amount of virtual CPUs. So here it's one socket, which is like one CPU, and four cores with two threads. So now if I click on update, and I run this VM, and we just look at the dashboard and see the CPUs, we can see that Unraid is just managing them and spreading them across the load of all my CPUs, 
as it sees fit. Now, obviously, it's not a good idea to do this for a gaming VM, but there are sort of certain use cases where this can be a better situation than having CPUs pinned to various cores. Now, one such use case could be is you have a server like this with two CPUs, or even a server with an eight core CPU. Now, you've isolated four cores from the host and pinned them back to your gaming VM. Now, the other four cores you don't want to pin things to. You just want Unraid to manage any containers there, along with, for example, a Ubuntu server VM. And now Unraid can load balance all those processes itself over the non-isolated cores. Right, and the last tip is for you guys who have dual CPU servers. Now, when pinning your cores, unless you have a really good reason why you need more cores than just one of your CPUs can provide, only pin cores from the same CPU. Now, if you pin cores across CPUs, the performance will be degraded. So always make sure you pin your virtual CPUs from the same socket. Right, so that's the end of this server tuning series of videos. Now remember that the ideas presented in this video are tools for you to use when tuning processes in your server. Like I said before, you have to try things out, but always keeping in mind other things going on on the server. Now there'll be a lot of trial and error, but anyway, for me, that's half the fun. I hope you got some useful tips from this. If you like the video, please hit the like button, it really helps. And if you're not a subscriber, well, please subscribe to the channel. If you really like my work, then any donations are really appreciated, which you can do from the links at the top of the page. Anyway guys, whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you all next time.